Hey guys, Cameron here with Emerson Property Management. Every week I bring you tools, tactics, strategies, lessons I've learned, things that have helped me build up a sizable real portfolio in about two years and now manage that portfolio. Today, guys, I wanna to talk to you about CapEx or capital expenditures. So this is super important if you're buying long-term rental properties. I don't know how many times I have to mention this to newbies or people that just aren't thinking about it. It's one of those costs that kind of gets hidden or sunk. So if you're not familiar with CapEx or you're not taking it into consideration into your current calculations when you're evaluating a rental property, you're going to want to watch this episode. This is super important. I'm going to show you exactly how you can break it down. You can break it down for each one of your rental properties and I will really help you out. So before I do that real quick, um, if you guys can, appreciate you like, subscribe, uh, share this. If you find this valuable, share it with a friend, family member. It really helps us out. So let's talk about CapEx. Okay. I've got a lot of stuff on here, guys. So CapEx or capital expenditure, what is that? First and foremost, those are larger items. So like bigger items that you're going to have to replace. Appliances, HVAC system, flooring, water heater. I put paint on here because it is an expense that comes up a lot. And it's very, very, very expensive over the life of your rental property, especially if you have to paint the whole place between tenants. So this is a big one and why I put it at the top. But those are capital expenditures. These aren't repairs. It's not like, you know, something, you know, breaks. This is a bigger expense that you're going to have to come up with every now and there's just only so much useful life. So, you know, you could put on here um, plumbing. You could put on cabinets and countertops. I only put these top five just because, just for space, honestly, I couldn't go through. But when you guys are going through this, you guys can put down all of your stuff and I just came up with just average figures here, but you can put paint, how much it costs. Obviously I put 3,500 in here, but if you have a, a 1,200 square foot condo, it's gonna cost you a lot less than 3,500 to paint that place. Versus if you have a 3,500 square foot place, it's gonna cost you a lot more than 3,500 to paint that. So go through these and I'll, again, I'll, I'll, go, I'll go through all this um, and you guys can build this out for yourself. So again, capital expenditures, Bigger, bigger ticket items that you're going to have to budget for that are going to come up between now and then. Roof is another perfect example. But the number to use is about $200 a month. Now, people are going to say, well, where do you get that from? I'm going to break down five and just show you some of these five. But if you break down all of your mechanicals, the, you know, uh, the appliances, HVAC, you add in plumbing, you add in countertops and cabinets, you add in all the stuff that's going to break every now and then, windows, maybe a driveway, a foundation, all that stuff, if you add that up, you're going to be surprised how close it gets to be $200 a month. I've been doing this about 10 years now, and I can tell you that number is scary accurate. Now, I rounded up a little bit just to be safe, and obviously costs keep rising. So if you're watching this video, this is 2023. If you're watching this in 2020, 2033 or beyond, this number is going to have to get adjusted. But let me show you how to calculate your own, now that you understand what CapEx is and then the rule of thumb, let me show you how to calculate your own CapEx. So take your rental property and go, how long does it take, or let's just start with paint. These ones, everybody's gonna have. Paint, how much does it cost to paint? I just did an average in here of $3,500 for, for a property. That's gonna last me about five years. Maybe you can go more, maybe less. I'm just gonna average of five years. If I break five years, divide, if I do 3,500 divided by five years, divided by 12 months in each year, I'm gonna get $58 a month. So every five years to come up with 3,500, I need to budget 58 bucks a month. Same thing with appliances. So you have appliances, about $2,000 in appliances. Some are gonna be more, some are gonna be less. You're gonna get about 10 years out of those. That's $17 a month. HVAC. 3,500, 20 years, that's probably a little high, but 20 years, that's gonna be $15 a month. Flooring, I did 5K, I'm assuming you're using great LVP flooring or tile, that'll be 30 years, $14 a month. Water heater, and I'll show you, this works just for these smaller ones as well. Now I say a thousand small, but you know this is about probably as cheap as you wanna go on, on, on the, you know, CapEx side. I wouldn't put stuff in there that's four or $500. It's just, you know, that stuff comes up. That would be probably more considered a repair. And $1,000 and a water heater is going to run you about 15 years. 
So that's $6 a month. So if you add just these five up, it's about $110 a month that you need to set aside just to be able to afford these five expenses when they come up. So if you guys take your property and add in the roof, add in cabinets and countertops, maybe you've got some older cabinets and you think those are probably going to go out in about three, maybe five years. Do the math. Do the math. If you just bought appliances, then you know now you need to start seven, setting aside $17 a month to be able to afford those in 10 years to be able to afford that expense. Now, I want to, I want to preface this with saying, you guys keep in the back of your mind that some of y'all aren't going to own these properties for 20 or 30 years. If you're looking at this from a perspective of, I'm going to buy it, I'm going to do some fix up, I'm going to put a tenant in there for a year or two, and then I'm going to turn around and sell it and get my equity. That is a much different, you, you really don't have to do this calculation. You need to look at what's going to break over the next two, three, or four years. But for most of the audience, for people that are looking to buy a property and hold it for the long term, you must run these calculations. You have to do that. So go through the main components or the most expensive components of your rental property. And again, it varies a little bit for everybody. These are probably going to be definitely be on your list. And then their prices are going to be are going to vary. And just look at the useful life. And you might say, well, Cameron, I'm, I'm on year 10 of my AC system. I think, you know, it's only got about five or 10 years left. Well, then just say I need 3,500 or 4,500 or 5,500 divided by how, how much longer you have you think that system is going to last. And then divide that by your months to get your monthly rate. So adding all those up, and if you do this for each of your rental properties, if you do this for each one, you will have a specific CapEx number. So I've mentioned this in a vi another video before, but one way that you can reduce your CapEx number is go in and replace a bunch of these things. If your flooring's on its last leg, if your HVAC's on its last leg, if your appliance is on her last leg, that means that you're gonna have to save a lot of money and not $200 a month, you're gonna have to probably save $2,000 a month, if these are all going to break, you think within the next year, you're going to have to save a lot of money next year to be able to afford those. So one way you can reduce your CapEx is buy either a brand new home or do a substantial rehab. That will break, bring this number down substantially. So if, and, and especially if you know, I'm going to be selling it in 10 or 15 years, we don't have to worry about, you know, the flooring. You don't have to worry about the water heater. This, guys, I really wish I would have known earlier. This CapEx number and this stuff is one of the reasons why I took the conservative approach to replace things that were kind of on their last leg. And if, so when I go into a rehab, instead of messing with an AC system that's 15 years old and trying to fix it and coming out and putting Freon in it and keep messing with it and oh my, you know, we got to tinker this, this is out the fan blower, this and that expense it. Just replace it. That way, when the tenant gets in there, they have a great experience. You don't have to keep sending guys out and at 100 or 150 or $250 a pop when you're going out and keep continuing to do stuff, you'll be damn close to some of these numbers. You know, I mean, if you have to go out there every year, uh, multiple times a year, especially in the summer, you're creating a bad tenant experience and it's expensive. It's like, man, just bite the bullet. If you don't do that, if you don't go forward and put these in new, you don't have to, I'm not saying just go and do everything new just to do it, but set aside some money based on this. Do your CapEx number. Do this for each property and go through the main stuff. Again, if you think of the plumbing is old cast iron plumbing, start adding that stuff in. Foundation, add those big costs in. A roof is another good one, but I honestly, I ran out of room. So I can only put on these and I wanted to make sure I showed you the calcs. So there it is. This is how you get to the $200 a month average CapEx number. But again, run this for your own rental property. Go through the main components and run it for your own. Um, it'll help you out in the long run. Instead of saying, man, I was supposed to make $200 a month on this property, and now I'm breaking even. Why am I breaking even? It's very clear because you forgot to include CapEx. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, let me know. If it wasn't, let me know. I appreciate you guys, and I'll see you all next week.